Freaks, it's Wednesday, December 27th, 2023. Coming up on the program today, receiving the greatest gift of them all, incest. Plus, the FBI is coming for your Nona's Beef Brajol recipe, the curious case of a man's chest exploding, and this Christmas, Santa plummeted to his death. Distorted View Daily proudly presents a very special holiday greeting from the pride of Canada, weatherman Frankie McDonald. Hey everybody, I'm going to wish every single person on the entire face of the planet Earth a Happy New Year. I'd like to wish every one and every single person in every single country in the whole entire face of the planet Earth and Happy New Year from Frankie McDonald. That is me. I want you to eat 50 jelly sausages at once. Eat them all right now. Eat those 50 jelly sausages right now. Go, go. Eat five more sausages and don't go fall down. I just barely finished it. Thanks for watching. I'm Frankie McDonald. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Henson. Don't get AIDS. You know Optimus Prime is my husband, nigga. Hi, Galileo2333. I'm going to touch the feces and masturbate with it. Oh, bitches can't suck a dick worth a damn. Yes, Tim Henson back here with you to finally kick off a new week of programs. Have a great episode of DB for you. Uh, this is the first real show since Christmas. Awesome to have you all back, and I'm uh, so happy to be back. You know, I can only spend a couple days in Ashtabula before I start to get antsy. I gotta get out of here. There is absolutely nothing going on in that town, aside from um, another grand opening of a Dollar General store. Now, we've talked about this on the podcast before. You may recall I did a count of how many Dollar Generals there were in Ashtabula. It's a small town, and, you know, there's, like, double digits when it comes to, you know, the number of Dollar General stores, and they're opening a new one. Did you know there's such a thing as a Dollar General grocery store? There are so many regular Dollar General stores. The Ashtabula City Council actually told Dollar General, you're not allowed to build anymore. They wanted to build another store on the on the, the main road in Ashtabula. It's, it's Route 20, right? I would say every... Half a mile, there's another Dollar General on this same very street. It's the most bizarre fucking thing. And they wanted to build another one. Ashtabula said no. But they did say, look, we need grocery stores is what we need. We, You know, we need necessities. And apparently Dollar General has this thing. I don't know if it's called like Dollar General Markets or something. But it's a, a bigger Dollar General store. And it's got groceries. Probably very cheap, all imported from China groceries. That's what our produce needs, more lead. Well, DG has you covered. For those of you who may be newer listeners, Ashtabula is my hometown. Right? It's where I grew up. It's a very like small, rural town in northeast Ohio. My mom lives there, so whenever the holidays roll around, I stay with her for a couple of days. And I always bitch about uh, the temperature in her apartment. I don't want to rehash all of that, but, you know, 76 degrees is insane! Very rarely have I ever described a resident's temperature as sweltering, but that's what's going on in my mom's house. My mom looked at me at one point. She's like, are you sick? Your face is all red. I'm like, you could boil an egg on my face right now. It's excruciatingly hot. As a matter of fact, when I would step outside to, you know, cool off, I'd start to sizzle like you could hear tss. steam was being let out. 
The other thing, and again, I'm not complaining here. I love my mom. I would spe- I would I would love to see her even more than I do. I would put up with the heat and also uh, the newest thing that is unbearable is uh, you know she watches that uh, AMC American Movie Classics. These are all these like films from the 1940s and 50s. But you know she's in her 80s, and I guess maybe her hearing is going. So that television is cranked up to such an insane decibel level. I guess it would be best compared to a uh, a wind turbine or maybe a jet engine on a commercial airliner. The other thing is uh, my mom is a bit of an insomniac. So even at like two or three in the morning, I'll hear this. Charles, you're the most insensitive man in the world. Why must you leave before the children have had a chance to open their Christmas presents? Like, it's absolutely absurd. Can you turn that down? What's absurd is your inability to support my you career, Audrey. You, you know, know how important this account is to the business. Just now the children can open their presents with you. I'll be back for dinner. So turn the goddamn TV down, woman. Scrooge, you know that? Now, Audrey, I'd expect that kind of back talk from a common streetwalker, but my wife, well, how'd you like that? That's some respect you give me. It's like all day long. That's all she watches. It's American movie classics. Add that to the fact it feels like I'm on the surface of the sun. It's like I've blown out multiple senses. My ears are still ringing. Anyway, aside from that, I had a great little visit with my family. Christmas was a lot of fun. I totally won big at the uh, white elephant gift exchange thing. I don't know if you guys participate in this tomfuckery, but the idea is you're just supposed to bring any little dinky gift that you can either find in your house or just something cheap that you buy. And then everyone gets to, like, pick out a present that they unwrap. A lot of the presents are bad, right? Stupid. Like an inflatable turkey or a giant can of uh, pinto beans. But then there are also some good gifts, right? Like someone wrapped uh, or gave uh, 15 scratch-off lottery tickets. That was a hot commodity. Everyone wanted that one, right? Because you had the chance to win some uh, real money. There were some, like, bottles of booze, Patron and stuff. It was actually Patron and Moonshine. <laughs> My family is there were a bunch of alcoholics from Kentucky. Anyway, after everyone, uh, I'm, I'm explaining this because a lot of people don't know how this stupid thing works. I don't even really understand how it works. Everyone does it a little bit different. But then after everyone gets the, you know, a, a present of their own, then through a variety of different rules, depending on how you play the game, you can like swap, right? You, you get the opportunity to steal someone else's gift. And everyone went, of course, for the lottery tickets or the booze. Not me. My sister unwrapped the best gift. And it's a gift with a distorted view daily connection to it. The reaction my sister had when she unwrapped this was interesting because at first, you know, she was laughing. She thought it was hilarious. Then she looked at it a little more closely and was kind of disgusted. She's like, ew. This is kind of gross. And then she was told exactly what she was looking at, and she practically threw the the photo onto the ground. Like, ah, what? Oh! Let me give you guys a little hint. Many of you should have no trouble guessing what this is once you hear the sound. <laughs> you guys know what that sound is? One of our buddies, Ray, from the Whitaker family, also known as the Inbred family. Yeah, the present my sister received in this uh, white elephant gift exchange was a a framed photograph of the Whitaker family, complete with one of the brothers drooling. I assumed it was my nephew who came up with this gift because he's like into weird shit like I am. But come to find out, it wasn't uh, a gift from my nephew. It was my brother. My brother came up with this. He is obsessed with the Whitakers. He's, he's fascinated by the family, not even in a in a mean way. You know how we get a kick out of Ray barking. Burp, burp. <laughs> you know, we can. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't know if it's considered barking or what, but we can be a little insensitive here on DV. But that's not why my brother liked it. He doesn't like him in that way. My nephew said that he walked in on my brother watching one of these videos and he was crying because he felt bad for this family. He's just like obsessed with the Whitakers, which is very sweet. He does find them funny, though. Funny enough to give a photograph of them as a Christmas gift. When I had the opportunity to either uh, grab a new gift or steal a present, I immediately went for the steal. I'm like, I'm sorry, sister. I'm going to need that photograph. And she's like, good, take it. 
I would have just given it to you, really. She was totally weirded out by the photo, but uh, I, I then the whole time, the whole rest of the game, <laughs> I was afraid someone was going to steal the photograph from me. No one wanted that. It's the most disgusting fucking thing. A picture of a bunch of drooling inbred mongoloids. My sister's like, um, I don't think you have anything to worry about. <laughs> You're safe. I thought maybe like one of my cousins or something would uh, like be an asshole and be like, oh, I see Tim's happy with this present. I'm going to steal from him. But they didn't. I'm happy to report the inbred family uh, photograph is now a, a part of the Distorted View studio. Next time I do a video, I'm sure you'll see them in the background there. All this is a very long way of saying, yeah, it was a pretty good Christmas this year. Nice haul I got. Gotta be honest with you, as nice as this Christmas was, 2024 is shaping up as a whole to be amazing. And it's all thanks to something called Nasara. Guys, I don't know if you've been following this. Probably not, unless you're a fucking conspiracy theory nut. Let me just read from a website that sort of explains what this is all about. Nasara refers to a conspiracy theory promoted by someone named uh, Shanai Goodwin also known as the Dove of Oneness. Like, you know we're dealing with a cult here. The Dove of Oneness. Just, it just sounds like someone who's going to make all of their followers wear tracksuits and eat arsenic-laced Rice Krispie treats. It's the only way you'll be able to catch the cosmic bus to the planet Norlon 4. That's where true heaven awaits us. Anyway, uh, the goddess <laughs> Dove of Oneness says all debts will be wiped out in a radical reset of the U.S. economy. It's a reference to the National Economic Security and Recovery Act, NACERA, a set of U.S. economic reforms proposed back in the 1990s, which included abolishing compound interest on loans, replacing income tax with a national sales tax, and returning U.S. currency to the gold standard. While the proposals were never actually introduced before Congress... Conspiracy theorists claim they were secretly passed and then suppressed by George W. Bush in the wake of the 9-11 attacks. Many people think in 2024, Nasera will officially take effect. And it, because of that, everyone's debts are going to be forgiven. It's like we're going to just start all over. Here is one of these conspiracy theorists who believe in Nasara. Well, I'm at my bank. Wells Fargo, you can see it out there. Boca Raton, 441. Florida. I walked in the lobby. Lots of changes. They're taking down walls. They're marking out cubicles. There's a lot of changes. Proof that everyone's debt in the United States is going to be wiped out. One branch of Wells Fargo in Boca Raton, Florida is going through a slight remodel. The evidence is overwhelming. Guys, if I were you, I would just stop paying my bills right now. Let that credit card debt pile up. Who cares? It's all going to be forgiven next month. They're taking down walls. They're marking out cubicles. There's a lot of changes. The gentleman behind me in line said, lots of changes, it looks like. I asked him if he knew what Nassara was. He said no. I told him to look it up. Also, look up Mother Dove. She will guide you to spiritual and financial enlightenment. And by that, I mean you should wire all of your money to Mother Oneness, thereby enlightening your bank account. Be very, very light. I went to the counter and I spoke to the teller. I've been talking to her a little bits and pieces about Nasara. Mm -hmm. She's never denied anything. That's right. Yeah, a bank teller is going to have all the inside information on Nasara. It's the funniest thing when it comes to these conspiracy theorists. They think everyone in the banking industry is like is in on it or like knows what's going on. Bank tellers are like the grunts. They're the lowest on the totem pole. I've been talking to her little bits and pieces about Nasara. She's never denied anything. She just looks scared when I speak to her. She's always smiled very big. Uh, she told me that if I don't see you before Christmas, have a wonderful Christmas. I said, it should be a very nice Christmas. And she laughed and said, yes, it will be. Yeah, code. She knows what's coming. Uh, after I left, the gentleman that I mentioned this Sarah to came running over to me. This is where I call bullshit on the entire story. He said that uh, he's never heard of Nasara before, but he just looked it up. Yeah. While he was in the bank, he did some research. And he is very excited. Uh, I said to him, look up what comes with Nasara. And he said he did, and he can't wait. So that's one more that's awake. Check your banks, folks. 
talk to the tellers. The new rainbow currency is already in the vaults, and it cannot be released until they get the word. Rainbow currency is MDMA, right? That's what we used to call it in the gay clubs. Yeah, apparently there's like a whole new form of currency going to replace the dollar i can't imagine the term rainbow currency is going to stick though macho straight guys don't want to be talking about rainbow dollars and rainbow coins you know the gays have tainted that term you know it's just not masculine a lot of people a lot of people are on ndas non-disclosure agreements tellers managers at banks they cannot discuss it under penalty so you got to put two and two together. Uh, Nasara is here. Nasara is here. No- November 25th at 11, 11 a.m. It started here in America. Shit, I missed that press release. Do you think maybe this is just like an NFT scam or something? I, uh, something tells me this guy has put all of his money into some sketchy accounts betting on this rainbow currency you know mother oneness i'm sorry i keep calling her mother oneness dove of oneness is probably the only person who's gonna make money on this whole nasara thing right oh that dove is raking in some big bucks i bet look it up god bless you all have a great christmas well, uh, I'm not sure exactly when Nasara is supposed to take effect. He said something about November. I guess they're just getting the ball rolling now. Maybe early 2024 is when we'll hear something about it. I went on this guy's TikTok account, and uh, there's only one newer post. I guess he's responding to a bunch of people who called him a nut job. Uh, he writes, so many claim to, quote, no, nothing is going to happen. Call me what you want, but I'm awake. I'm pure-blooded and well-researched. Go back to sleep. And then he includes a bunch of photos of what uh, the new currency supposedly looks like. Because, you know, we're getting rid of regular dollar bills. He shows off the new one, five, ten, fifty, hundred dollar bills, like what they look like. And um, someone pointed out that uh, those dollar bill designs have been floating around the Internet for years. It was a design project by a student in college. It's not the new post-Nasara money, also known as rainbow currency. As far as uh, the design of the of the currency, it looks pretty good. Take a look at the chapter artwork and you can uh, see it for yourself. I wouldn't mind if real money did look like this. I'm so sick of just the, the boring green dollar bills, you know? So old and played out. That being said, yeah, it's 100% fake. This, this stuff is not real. This guy's a fucking moron. Speaking of crazy people, I've got a very short update from Tony. You may remember him as the guy who has messed up teeth because of the government using satellites to ruin them, I guess. He's having all sorts of mouth problems due to satellite interference. Well, now the government has gone too far. It's one thing to rot out a man's teeth with satellites. But a line has to be drawn here. Somebody obviously tried to communicate something that some of these government people tried to copy my pizza dough. They stole Tony's pizza dough recipe. Or they tried to steal my pizza dough the way I make it. That would be more court cases against the government. Lawsuit. Add pizza dough theft to the list. And that's immediate lawsuits, too. Automatically. Every day of my life is copywritten and protected. So in reference to people trying to steal my inventions, people trying to steal my recipes, people trying to steal my pizza dough, people trying to copy things, people trying to rip me off or whatever, is a crime. But somebody tried to say that when I went to the store that some government men got into the house and they stole my pizza dough and they took it downtown and analyzed it and then they tried to copy it or something. You know what, though? Try as they might, they'll never be able to duplicate your dough. They may get the ingredients, but the one thing missing from government pizza dough is love. You know? You put your heart and soul into that pizza dough. That's trespassing. It's a violation of royal law and treasury laws, too. Mm. So somebody needs to find out if they did that. And they need to arrest people trying to steal things from me. It's not been a great Christmas for Tony, unfortunately, due to, you know, the dough theft. It's been pretty hard on him. Honestly, we're all a little shaken up here about that. Uh, Moving on now. 
You know, recently we have been playing a lot of police body cam footage, people getting arrested, whether they be Karens or drunk drivers or sovereign citizens. Those are always fun to play. Today, though, I've got a new type of person getting handcuffed. An old boomer mommy. And she is a bitch. The police were called because apparently she was getting in a fight with her son. I don't know if it was a verbal altercation or physical. I don't even know who called the cops, if it was the son or a neighbor. Anyway, it looks like the cops find this woman in her vehicle getting ready to leave her house, or maybe she was just coming home. Regardless, from the very beginning, you can tell she's going to be a problem. She doesn't want to get out of her car. Then she pulls this stunt. When which Eventually, she does come out of the car, right? And the uh, police officer asks to see her ID. She's holding her purse, right? So she begins to, like, look through her purse, but then she makes a beeline to her house. She was obviously, you know, trying to run for shelter. The cops managed to intercept her, and that's where we're going to begin. Why don't you have a seat on the ground? You asked for me. You You asked me for some ID, yes Uh or no. Well, because you have your purse. I went to go get you some ID. Am I talking slow enough for you, dipshit? Enough for, I was not. I was. Could I go get him system. some ID? I don't need an ID right now, ma'am. I'd really appreciate it though if you could hang tight for a second. Can we do that, please? I would. Nice female officer trying to defuse the situation. I'd really appreciate he that. Ask me for some ID. I understand. I am trying to comply with the person who has threatened to arrest me if I do not comply. It's interesting that she was in her vehicle when they found her, but she doesn't have her ID. Also, she doesn't have shoes on. Just an observation. Well, ma'am, I'm here now. And Can I, ask I no, no. get no. my ID? No, ma'am. She really wants in that house. and We know what you're going to do when you get in there. You're going to lock the door. <laughs> Not let the cops in. I'm asking you nicely to please just take a minute right here. Um, I've got a video. He wants and me injury. to get so my ID. If this okay, is the- okay we're, we're past the ID thing now. She's really hung up on that. Go south. We can just, uh, he wants me to get um, some ID. May I get I some ID? Uh, no, I, I don't yes or no? He, do you no, have ma'am. that on your but if, video? But if she's going to continue like that. Do you have away. that on your video so. that he asked me for <laughs> some ID? No, ma'am. I was not present. Ma'am, what's your name? What's your name, ma'am? It's on my ID. <laughs> What's on your ID? What's on your video? So, uh, I'm comfortable with the video I just watched and oh, with the obvious signs of injury. All right, I ma'am, will go. Turn around this is you're house. under arrest. Okay, so it's kind of hard to hear because the female police officer is talking at the same time the, the woman is screeching about her ID, right? But the, the female police officer saw some sort of video, I guess, that the son shot that uh, details physical injury caused by his mother. This signs of injury. All right, I ma'am, will go. Turn around, this is ma'am, you're under arrest right now. This, this should go well, by the way. Why? You're under Drop arrest your for Why? domestic battery. I need Drop you to purse. stop tensing Why? up. I need Drop you to stop purse. tensing Why? up. Drop your purse. Ma'am, Why? I need you to stop. Domestic battery. Drop okay. Your purse. Why? Get- she really demands a lot of answers, and the cops just aren't giving her any. That's really got to piss her off, huh? It's one of my favorite things in these arrest videos. When the people getting arrested think they have way more power and influence than than they actually do. It's like, they're, you're not in control of the situation at all. This is not going to work out well for you. I don't want to hurt you. Please drop your purse. Please tell me Ma'am, why I am drop on... Your purse. Please tell me why I'm Ma'am, the I advise you... Domestic battery. Are you taping this? Things are getting screamy, but this is a classic good news, bad news situation. The good news is we finally got her to stop talking about that damn ID. She's not demanding to go in her house for anything anymore. Of course we are. Are you taping this? Yes, they are from multiple angles. You told me you were taping this. We are. Are you taping this? Yes, we are. There, now shut up about it. I have asked multiple times I've got a why thing. I am under arrest You're gonna hurt for yourself. domestic You're gonna hurt battery. Yourself, ma'am. You're gonna I don't hurt want Could someone tell me? Anyone? I have a video and obvious signs of injury, ma'am. That's why you're under arrest right now. Do you think that's going to satisfy her? Or is she just going to start screaming another question? Who are you all? Please give your names for the video. Please 
please give your names for the video. We got a real bossy Betty here. They uh, So they handcuff this woman and then have her sit on the grass. She lies down because she refuses to hold herself up. So they, you know, they lay her down. And now she's acting like she is uh, she has passed out. She doesn't respond to her name. Uh, she's just acting like she is, you know, she's asleep or oh, something. That ID? Oh, that was an ID. Oh, I have her. Oh, by the way, her name, they find out her name is Donna. Yeah, I do have her ID. Let her take a rest. Donna, I can see you moving. Yeah. Donna, we know you're okay because you're breathing and your eyes keep opening. So let's <laughs> you, get- you're really bad at this. Get you stood up. Let's get you to the car. I won't play this whole next part, but they basically just lift her up and lo and behold, she can walk. She successfully does that for a couple seconds, and then she realizes that she doesn't want to go to the cop car, so she uh, completely drops to the ground again. Um, we can both carry our shoulders if you carry your feet. Yep, right? boss. Yep. You want to grab her feet? Yeah, I'll grab her feet. So now they're just gonna, they're just going to pick her up completely, feet and arms. She continues to act like she's passed out uh, until they get her in the car, and then all of a sudden she comes yeah. to. Could you please tell me why I'm under arrest? This is a new tactic from her. Ask nice and quietly. Could you please tell me why I'm under arrest? Not one single person has told me why I am under arrest. Well, that's not true. I've heard th- I've heard the reason. <laughs> Could you, Madame Officer, please tell me why I am in... Finally, she's showing some respect this car. Yes, ma'am. I told you you're under arrest. Okay, we're going to the Naperville jail. For what? For domestic battery charge, ma'am. Why? Because you battered your son and I it's on video with obvious signs of injury. Yes, ma'am. It's not up to debate. It's been done. I have the probable cause for the arrest. We'll be going to do some paperwork, okay? Not okay. Okay. Could you please tell me your name, officer? I'm sorry you are choking on your latte. Could you please tell me your name? (laughs) What a bitch. Officer. The officer does not respond to the woman, probably for that mean comment about choking on her latte, right? So now that's what uh, Donna here clings on to and is screaming about for pretty much the rest of the, uh, the ride to the police station. But we all know that this officer is not willing to provide her name, even though she is driving me to the police station on a Friday afternoon in July. You can just hear it in her voice. She's ramping up, getting more agitated. More loud. And she is saying that I am under arrest, but there is absolutely no record of an arrest. And I will be suing the Naperville Police Office for this arrest. This just continues for a while. And my lawyer will be subpoenaing this tape and he will have your picture and he will know your name. And you will not look good. Dear God, tell me again why I'm in your car. I mean, you just admitted she told you multiple times. Tell me again. I think she just wants someone to talk to her. And by the way, everybody knows this is for the tape that it is illegal to take somebody from their home without telling them why. And this police officer who will not give me her name will also not tell me why. And everything about this is illegal. Even at the police station, she she pulls the same shit. She's like, I don't even know why I'm being arrested. No one will tell me. Meanwhile, we've heard it fucking five times now, right? What are my charges? By the way, because nobody has told me a single charge. Ultimately, this woman was arrested and charged uh, on two counts of domestic battery. Interestingly, at the time of this particular arrest, she was out on bond for a prior domestic incident. So this wasn't her first interaction with the Naperville Police Department that she hates so much. All right, uh, there you go. Just a feisty old broad getting arrested. Uh, And with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist to the fucked up news right now. Hey, 
it's still technically the holidays. We got until New Year's, right? So, Sideshow Holiday Specials are still in effect. Grab a monthly Sideshow membership for only $6, a yearly for $60, or a lifetime membership for only 250 bucks. Now is the time when you want to sign up. Why, you ask? Well, starting in 2024, I'm going to be doing three Sideshow exclusive episodes every week and uh, just two free episodes. So if you want to get your week's worth of Distorted View Daily, you know what to do. Sign up right now, superfreaksideshow.com. When you sign up, you get a personalized RSS feed that you can plug into uh, most podcasting apps. Works well with Overcast, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts. Ones that uh, play nice with premium feeds or password-protected ones that uh, allow username and passwords. Uh, There's instructions on superfreaksideshow.com how to set up the account. Very easy. For an even easier way, though, if you happen to use Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can sign up for access right inside the, the app. Just open Spotify, for instance. Go to Distorted View. You know, search for Distorted View Daily, and you can see where you can sign up for Sideshow access right in the app. Same deal with Apple Podcasts. That way you don't have to mess around with websites and usernames and passwords and stuff. If you uh, use Apple, you can even pay with Apple Pay. Pretty cool. For more details on that, check out distortedview.com and, of course, superfreaksideshow.com. Other ways to help uh, support the show, we've got uh, the Distorted View store, still chock full of merchandise at distortedview.com. And we've got a Patreon account, patreon.com slash distortedview. Just a way to help support the program. You can pledge as little as a dollar over there. Every little bit helps. If you pledge at least five, you get access to a special voicemail line where I will play your calls first. And I believe we do have some patrons checking in today. But first, let's get into the news. I do not like this first news story. You know, I'm always joking about how my heart might explode at any moment in time. It almost happened before. You know, when I had my little issue and my heart rate was like 200 beats a minute. Well, for one man, his chest did explode and it killed his daughter along with it. That was a powerful explosion. What the hell's going on? Well, a lawsuit has been initiated by Fatou Nganda Seka and her husband, Mahamudo Tawali and their three-year-old son, Matar Mamamundadudu. Okay, I probably mispronounced all those names, but really, are names important? You don't know these people. They're some randos. Say my name, say my name. Fancy, oh Jesus, Francis Sajagos or something. Say my name, say my name. Sexologist, C- oh Jesus, Cecilia Jering. Better say my name. Last week, the shutters were down at Ringor's large family home in the village of Loveden, something or other. This is the one thing that's keeping me from getting those high-paying network journalist jobs. I could totally work for CNN or, you know, be the anchor of this the CBS Evening News if it weren't for these names. They're so hard to pronounce. I absolutely hate when there are too many consonants in a row. Like, how the fuck do you pronounce NG? Depending on your ethnicity, it's, you know, pronounced different ways. Like in China, there's like N-G-U-Y-E-N. That's pronounced win. Here, this this sounds like a more African-like name. So it's like Nogoja or something, you know? I know these uh, conspiracy theorists always uh, rail against the one world government. They think, they think that's what politicians are up to. Like that Joe Biden, he's in cahoots with China. He's trying to make the one world government. I would welcome that. Especially if it would mean some standardization when it comes to pronunciation and language and stuff. Come on. I would totally learn Chinese or something. If we all agreed, you know what? Everyone in the world is just going to speak Chinese. I'll take the six months and learn the fucking language. I just want everyone to speak the same words. I want us all to sound the same. You know what the real problem is? Diversity. Not a fan of it. Diversity is what is making words hard for me to pronounce. That's where it starts. You know, if it means I have to stop sucking dick, so be it. I'm all for the end of diversity. We should all look and sound the same. Thank you. All right, I'm sorry. Where the hell's my rainbow currency? I want to pay with sprinkles. Anyway, this guy and uh, the three-year-old son tragically perished in a fire. The fire, which occurred in their Georgia apartment last Christmas, was allegedly caused by an explosion of a medical heart pump device implanted in Tarawali. It's hard to recover from your chest exploding. So the, the husband died and then apparently the son was hit with some heart shrapnel or something. And uh, he also died uh, in the incident. The lawsuit targets several parties, including the creators of the heart device, Tallahassee-based Big Bang Fireworks and Novelty Incorporated. 
They make explosives, whoopee cushions, and apparently cardiac-based medical equipment. No, that is not correct or accurate information. Uh, the creators of the heart device known as the HeartMate 3 Left Ventricular Assist System, or HM3, its battery manufacturers, and the management of the apartment complex, which had been under a fire watch <laughs> due to previous fire incidents and code violations. The complaint details a manufacturing defect in the battery pack of the device, which led to overheating and the explosion, ultimately stopping the device and causing Tara Wally's death. The lawsuit also criticizes the apartment complex's safety measures, noting the lack of functional smoke detectors, fire alarms, and sprinklers, and the ineffectiveness of the fire watch system in place. A neighbor eventually alerted the authorities, but by then, Tara Wally and his son had already succumbed to fire and smoke. Oh, that's how the baby died. The fire and smoke. Filed on December 1st, the lawsuit accuses the device makers Abbott Laboratories and Panasonic Corporation of North America. Pretty sure they make my microwave. I don't know if I feel safe popping my microwave popcorn in that thing anymore. All right. It alleges that the apartment manager was aware of the non-functional fire safety system in the building prior to the incident. Abbott Laboratories, or I'm sorry, Abbott Laboratories, defending their product safety record, considers the allegations baseless. I mean, there's a big fucking hole in this dude's chest. Take a look at the corpse. It blew his nipple right off. There's still grill marks on his neck. I mean, your, your device had something to do with that. Panasonic and the apartment complex's attorney have not yet commented citing the ongoing legal proceedings. Uh, so there you go. If you've got, like, a pacemaker or something, you might just be a ticking time bomb. All right, uh, second story we have for you today. This one comes from Las Vegas, Nevada, and I feel like we've been reading a lot of news stories recently about sovereign citizens or maybe just idiots in general who don't want to pay to register their vehicle and get license plates so they just make their own it's like arts and crafts time they grab some cardboard some uh, glitter paint and they go to town they make their own license plate and then inevitably get pulled over because they look nothing like real plates i've got another one of these stories here and the real danger of, um, you know, pulling a stunt like this is if you're doing any sort of other illegal activity, this license plate thing is just going to get the cops to start sniffing around you, you know? Of course, they're going to investigate and look look into your dealings. Don't give those pigs a reason to pull you over. Everything else you do, aside from, you know, whatever illegal activity you're, you're focusing on, everything else should be by the books. You don't want to attract any negative attention, you know? Well, in Las Vegas, Nevada, a police patrol stop led to the apprehension of Derek Williams, a 45-year-old Las Vegas resident who is now facing over 12 criminal charges. That's a lot. Uh, this arrest follows the discovery of a Dodge Charger with a counterfeit license plate made from a glossy paper sheet over cardboard, mimicking a Nevada license plate. The incident, which occurred in the 100 block of East Tropicana Avenue on December 16th, escalated when the police officer noticed the homemade license plate's unusual appearance. Are those strawberry shortcake stickers on your license plate? He really tried to gussy it up. Further checks revealed that the uh, plate's real number belonged to a different Dodge Charger, and the VIN number of the two cars didn't even match. Williams, the driver, exhibited signs of nervousness and provided a fake Washington ID card. Well, why start presenting real shit now? My, everything should just be fake. He's consistent. Uh, the vehicle was identified as stolen and the ID belonged to someone else. Williams was, oh, it was just, it was a real ID card, but it wasn't his ID card. <laughs> okay. Williams was taken into custody and a search yielded eight credit, <laughs> credit cards and debit cards. Uh, a birth certificate, and a social security card, all in other people's names. Those were discovered, like, not even, like, in the trunk of the car or something. No, they, those were all in his wallet. Moreover, a large assortment of miscellaneous keys and three checkbooks in other people's names were also found in the vehicle. The officer's report highlighted the abnormality of possessing such a variety of keys, suggesting potential intent for burglary. No! I don't think Derek Williams would ever do something that nefarious. Is that his real name, Derek Williams? In his car alone, he has 18 different names. 
Different names in the checkbooks, the credit cards, debit cards, birth certificate. Williams, who refused to reveal his real identity, was identified through mugshots in distinctive tattoos, including his surname and his daughter's name. He's got a tattoo of his surname and he wouldn't give it up? (laughs) A record search revealed Williams had five outstanding warrants and a history of primarily financial offenses in Nevada. He now faces multiple new charges, including possession of a stolen vehicle and identity theft, causing financial loss of over $3,000. He's scheduled for a preliminary hearing in Clark County Justice Court on January 4th, 2024. And finally today, freaks. Oh, I love this last story. It has to do with the holidays and traumatizing children. Also death. In a shocking event, children witnessed the fatal fall of Grandfather Frost, a figure akin to Santa Claus in Russia. Apparently, Santa fell from the 24th floor of a residential building over there in Russia. Sounds to me like he worked with Putin. Seems to happen to a lot of Putin's associates. I'm guessing Vladimir didn't get what he wanted for Christmas. The destruction of Ukraine! That's all I asked for! You bring me slippers? No way Santa was getting out of this holiday season alive. Anyway, the performer, an industrial climber, is that that even a job, had planned to descend the building to greet children gathered by a Christmas tree. (laughs) The details of the incident are unclear, but it's speculated that a mishap, well, no fucking shit, (laughs) he fell from the 24th floor. Uh, It's speculated that a mishap with the climber's safety ropes, oh, might have caused the fall. Onlookers initially mistook the fall for part of the performance. I'm sure they were all like applauding. Look at Santa tumble. He's using his magic. With confusion and disbelief spreading among the crowd, the realization of the tragedy led to shock and hysteria among the spectators, particularly the parents. The residential management company responsible for organizing the event expressed their condolences, describing the incident as a monstrous misfortune. A big blunder. Colossal catastrophe. Not to mention a whopping whoopsie. The company did emphasize the climber's experience, though. They committed uh, to assisting the police investigating the incident and preventing future occurrences. The next time Santa scales down a 25-story building. A resident of the building mentioned that such accidents were unprecedented despite regular window cleaning by climbers. Tragically, the climber's wife and son were reported to be among the witnesses. Russian state investigators are examining the scene for potential safety violations. Conflicting reports about the climber's age suggest he was either 35 or 25. Maybe 95? Definitely younger than 100, though. All right, uh, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Wednesday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of ya. All right, guys, I'd love to hear from you. And there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook.com slash Distorted View Show. You know all the ways to contact me, right? Uh, again, just pledge $5 over there at Patreon, patreon.com slash Distorted View, and you'll get access to that special voicemail line where I will play your calls first. And yes, we do have some patrons checking in today. Do good to me, boo. Twink toilet. Hey, twink. Um, calling in, calling in to uh, express that I have had my own you and Lord Goose moment. Mm. Um, so my boyfriend, this was our butt, this was our butterbell. He was he got sick at the end of November. Apparently, everyone did. Everyone was sick, and he refuses to go to the doctor. He refuses to take medicine. He thinks he can just heal himself through the power of will, I guess. Mm. Um, but he gets sick at the end of November. Day sick, does nothing about it. He's coughing. I keep telling him, go to the doctor, go to the doctor, go to the doctor. Do we need to start a Twink Toilets boyfriend death pool? We'll not do it. Comes this week. He goes, I go, where are you at? He's like, I'm at the doctor. I was like, oh, so he finally listened to me. He goes, no, I've been sick since the end of November. I just realized it. I have been telling him <laughs> that he has been sick since the end of November. You know, he's been like hacking up a lung and stuff. Literally for a month straight. Yeah. And now he goes, yeah, I, I too wanted to set him up, as you did with Lord Douche in the, 
the stupid um so what was it like did he just have does he have like pneumonia or something um, and like how how bad is it now if he would have just like taken care of it at the end of november would have been fine and now i mean it could have spread to his lungs and stuff like it could be real bad right oh oh, oh. oh boy <laughs> You have a beautiful Christmas. Well, I hope you did have a beautiful Christmas. And uh saw your mom and I said thank you for everything you've done for me this year. You have to do a lot of shit. And uh it's raining today in Arizona. <laughs> All right, well there you go. Someone checking in from Arizona. Uh mom's doing well, by the way. Although she acts like everything is like this huge commitment that she doesn't want to deal with right like even like going to christmas right go, we went over to my sister's house for christmas right and you just hear her getting ready she's like oh god i don't want to do this i just want this to be over with <laughs> like what 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 is going on and she's like i know it's just so much work to get ready i'm like what did you have to do really you had to put on your clothes you, you'd have to do that anyway I, she does this other thing. I'm sure I've talked about this on the show. So, like I mentioned, my mom is an insomniac, right? So, she'll end up, like, s- falling asleep in the middle of the day, right? Like, she'll take naps and stuff, and then she can't sleep at night. I guess that's not really an insomniac then. She's just, you know, her sleep schedule's all fucked up. But all night long, you know, when she's after she gets done watching her AMC, you know, movies from the 19-fucking-40s at 3 in the morning, she'll finally turn off the TV. And then, this is what I hear for the next couple hours because i'm still up i'm trying to sleep but there's so much going on in that house and it's so hot and uncomfortable i'm tossing and turning and then my mom who can't sleep all night long i just hear oh god well i don't even know that's her big thing i hear that i hear that so much oh god i don't even know what okay oh well and then she'll get up and go to the bathroom And then go to the kitchen, eat something, go to her room, play like Bejeweled or Candy Crush or something, go back to bed. Oh, God. And I'm like, at one point, I'm like, Mom, are you hurting? You sound like you're in pain. She's like, no, I just can't sleep. I'm like, well, that fucking makes two of us, doesn't it? All right. Uh, But yeah, other than that, she's doing great. By the way, she went to the doctor. The doctor told her, look, all you got to do if you need to go to sleep, if you're having trouble sleeping, Take some melatonin, which worked, by the way. She took it, and it worked. But then she decided she doesn't want to be taking any other pills. She's on medication. She's on, like, real medication. You know, old people medication for, I don't know, blood pressure, heart disease. I I don't know what it is. Whatever normal things old, you know, 80-year-old people take. But she she doesn't like the idea of taking melatonin. That's a that's a bridge too far for her. Sideshow freak and Patreon fuckboy Al Jelson calling and using my <laughs> holiday travel time. I like that Patreon fuckboy. Up on my show backlog. Two things. One, I want to get in the Mead's Dad Death Pool. If sure. it's available, I would like to choose my birthday and more importantly, your birthday, August first. What a wonderful birthday gift that would be for the two of us. Hey. And two, I want to tell you about a potential new kick card for the show. The kid's name is Josh goes by World of T-Shirts on TikTok. This is a deeply autistic young man who over the last year has become a full-blown degenerate alcoholic. There is I'm interested. Even a separate account of a guy who keeps track of all the drinks Josh records himself drinking, like tall boys on the subway, little like 99 watermelon shots in the back of a cab, like some real loser shit. Keep a track of the amount of money he's spending, how many calories he's taking it, and this fucking blood alcohol level. It is a whole thing with this kid and That's a potential awesome. goldman for the show. Uh, so check him out. See if there's something worth using. Anyway, I love you, Timmy Boo. Merry Christmas, you careless fairy. Love you too, Boo. Yeah, if you know uh, the account of this guy that uh, Al Jolson is talking about, what's his name? Josh, I guess. If you know who he's talking about, send me a link. I mean, I'll try to find him on my own, but I, I think I need more information, right? Full-blown alcoholic named Josh. Oh, I think he told us the name of the, the account, right? It's like World of T-Shirts or something. I'll, I'll listen back to the show and, and figure it out. Thank you very much, though, for the tip. That is all the time we have on this edition of the program. Why don't you guys email me? Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. 
voicemail line for you, 206-666-4463. That's 206-666. I'm sorry you are choking on your latte. Someone called into the show recently and said I wasn't exaggerating oh god enough like I used to. So I'm trying to I'm trying to work on that. Was that good? Yeah, oh god. Spread the distortion, STD. Tell all your friends about the show. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. Tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. Uh, so if you're not yet members, sign up right now. Otherwise, I'll see you back on Friday. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. If you're listening, it means you're one of my buddies. You're part of the club. Now, let's bait our big fat dongs together. Pull on those balls. Whip out those fleshy fuckers and goon out. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrob Media Group. Learn more at scrob.net.